Hello, my name is Frank Ebersold, and I've been carving since 1998. I started with one of those little kits where you get a boot that's basically a rough out, and you got a knife with that, and you just kind of followed the instructions, and you sat there, and it just kind of carved it out. Well, that was 1998, and I've been carving every year since then, and I've basically been doing it with a handful of tools. You'd be surprised how little it takes to actually get into this hobby. I'm sitting at a Workmate 425. This is uh, it's a Black & Decker bench and I've got uh, a series of 2x4s in here and I'm going to show you how I carve. It's, it's a uniquely different style and I haven't read a book about carving uh, besides that one little kit that I've got. I'm pretty much self-taught so the way I carve is extremely unique and I'm not going to say that it's the right way or the wrong way. It's just my way. And it's just the way I've learned to carve. And one of the things that uh, was the main driver behind the way that I carve is that, uh, you know, as you're, when you're a kid and you're playing with knives, if you ever had a knife that you were playing with, your dad always told you, hey, keep that knife blade away. Keep it away from you. Well, actually, I took that to heart. And so my style of carving is kind of centered around the fact that I keep the knife moving away from me 99.9% .9 of the time. And as a result, uh, I've only been nicked one time, so that's pretty good since 1998. And you're dealing with some pretty sharp tools, and so I never really carve towards me when I carve. And um, I'll have more to say about how I carve, and you'll get more details about that. But as far as the wood that I use, here's cottonwood bark. So this little guy is a spring gnome, and he's got the word spring carved into the bottom. And I, I like carving little gnomes. I don't know. That's, this is what I call a woodland gnome. And I don't really mind if they sell or if they don't sell. I'm happy to have these little guys hang around forever. And this is the thickness. You can see the cottonwood bark there. So it's a pretty chunky piece. There's the bottom of it where it used to fit around the tree. But every time I carve cottonwood, I always leave a little bit of this old bark in the front because, you know, folks, that was the bark that was facing Mother Nature for, what, over 100 years. So I think it's worth incorporating it, that aspect of the life of the tree, into my carving. And this little guy I get $125 for, and he's been painted out and sealed with a polyurethane finish. But... Um, all of this cottonwood bark comes from felled trees. It doesn't come from live trees. And you can certainly find this on eBay. It's not cheap, but as far as a wood to carve, you know, if you've got a wrist or something like that that gives you a little bit of trouble, this is the perfect wood to carve, cottonwood bark. It won't give you a lot of resistance. It's just easy going. And we're going to talk about how to carve that out too. Another type of wood that I use is white cedar. Now here's, here's a white cedar fence post, basically, that I got from Menards. This one happens to have a big old split there in the side of it, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But when I get this stuff, and I get it from Menards, and I cut it down so that the top of it has got some clear wood, and by that I mean it doesn't have any knots, so I pick a piece out that I can carve a bust into, and if you notice, this is perfect for that because all the knots are low. So I still might use it, but when I do get to a point that has a knot in it, if I want to work through that, I've got a Dremel tool that has a wood bit that just chews up these knots and basically vaporizes them. But on the base here, you know, I'll have the face up top and then I'll do the base and I might put like a little banner on it. I've got some that I've done that way. In fact, here's a little guy that I just carved out of a little piece of that white cedar. And you can see him here. So the one thing is, the basswood that I get, um, and the cottonwood bark is naturally dried out, and the basswood is kiln dried, but the white cedar is not. So this has got a lot of moisture in it, and when you get it from Menards or whoever you get it from, the first thing I do is I water down 25% polyurethane finish. I use a water-based polyurethane that I also get from Menards, I guess you could get it at Home Depot, any any Lowe's, any one of those things. But uh, it's rated for outdoor use. It's got a UV protectant in it as well. And like I said, it's water-based. And I think it comes from uh, the Minwax company, if I'm not mistaken. 
I'll have to get the label and add that in so that you know what I'm working with. But I buy that and I use it full strength. When I'm finished pinning the Santas, I'll coat it with that polyurethane finish and that protects them. But when I get this wood that's a little bit damp when I get it, the first thing I do is I take that polyurethane finish, the water-based, uh, dilute it down 25% with water, and I paint the whole piece of wood. Do it once, do it twice, do it three times. And what that'll do is it'll seal it and it'll let it uh, dry out a lot slower. And it won't, you won't get as many, you'll get a few cracks of like, maybe like this, maybe a little bit smaller, but generally not so many. So you do it three times, you let it soak in between each time, and that does a heck of a lot to take that green wood and make it carvable. And then it, um, then you just pick it up when you're ready and you just carve it out. And again, um, you know, you can paint it up and then finish it. So that is the white cedar. So here's something that I carved from basswood. So again, this is kiln dried basswood. And this little guy is a Santa, and he's standing at the base there. He's got a deer that I carved into him. And here's a bigger version of a Santa that I carved from basswood. So for something like this, I'd probably get, I'd say $150 for is what he would go for. And then here's a big Santa. Now this was carved out of 4x4x12 four by four by inch. And he's got a nice, I love to do that at, at the bottom there. See that base? It's got like a Christmas tree. He's going to paint up just perfectly. Nice beard. I'm going to show you guys how to do all that kind of stuff. One solid piece, 4x4, four four, kiln dried basswood. Not cheap, but good stuff to carve. And, you know, these, I have to say, these cottonwood bark sandas, though, you know, again, if you've got, uh, if you need some wood that's easy to carve, you just can't beat these. So if you are uh, don't have a lot of strength in your wrist or, you know, whatnot, man, this is the wood to go with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And people love the fact that I leave that unfinished at the bottom. They just love it. They just love to see these like this. I don't think anybody else does it that way. But folks, I hope that um, in this channel here, you're going to find a, another way to carve. And the, the next video that I want to do is going to show how I hone some of these tools and how I keep them sharp. I do very little grinding, you know, with these tools. I do mostly honing. And I'm going to do a little segment on how to do some honing and how to keep them razor sharp. But um, so, folks, it's a, it's a hobby that you can get into. I'd say for everything that I've got here, you know, it's probably five to six hundred dollars. I mean, that's for the whole kit and caboodle which isn't bad. I've carved hundreds of Santas with all this stuff, and it's just a great hobby to get into. It's like painting. You just get lost in it no matter what's going on in the world out there. This is a fantastic hobby to have, and I, it's, uh, in many ways, it's therapeutic. At least it is for me, and I think you might find it therapeutic for yourself as well. So, folks, um, you know, if you've got the will to, to carve, I'm going to show you the way. If you've got the will, I'll, I'll show you the way uh, the best I can. And I'm going to take these videos nice and slow so that hopefully you can pick up some, um, you know, some different ways of doing things. And like I said, you know, I've, I'm self-taught, so this isn't something that you'll see in a book. But I, I've taken a lot of effort into the faces. I don't know if you can see these. I'll hold this gnome up. But see that face and those eyes? You know, when... When people look at a carving, what they like to see, that, that face with those eyes, that just wins them over every time. So I put a lot of effort into that. I'm going to share how I do the eyes um, so that you can maybe crank out some of this stuff on your own. And then one of the other videos I want to do is also how to carve these little Santa, I call them pencil Santas. And, you know, if you've got... Uh, some one by one basswood you can cut up and you've got a little bit of time man you can make these things as gifts you can go to craft fairs and sell them all day long people love these things so I'm going to show you how to do all of this kind of stuff and uh, just stick with it and you know we'll kind of march through this and if you've got some good comments to uh, help me help you guys just feel free to share with me and let me know but um, so just subscribe and kind of follow along, and I'll be cranking these things out the best I can, as quickly as I can for you. 
And uh, till then, folks, thanks for tuning in. Till next time. <laughs>